Hello and welcome to ACS Golf and this week's review. I'm looking at this. The Lab Direct Force 2.1 T squared putter. Now, if you've never heard of Lab Golf before, they've been around for a couple of years and basically their idea is to have this putter that just doesn't swing when you put that, well, basically you'll swing through it. So when you have your putter movement, the putter stays as stable as possible. And you might have seen a few clips where they've sort of get it hanging by a hook and then they twist it and it's the face stays in the same position while all other putters sort of go like this, etc. The whole point is it's so balanced that it will always stay in the correct way. So always stay. You're not going to suddenly get it twisting like that, which obviously is going to make you miss the putt. That's the idea about them. Now, They've really got some traction over the past few years. You know, they're starting to get on tour as well. Will Zalatoris uses one. I wouldn't necessarily say he's improved his putting, but he is using one. Um, Bill Mickelson has actually put one in the bag, actually, the 3.0 version. So the smaller head of this is in the bag. And there's a few of the Menzanine version as well out there at the moment on tour. You know, because they've got three versions. They've got this, they've got the 3.0, and they've got this Menzanine one, which is basically like an odyssey 7 just a little bit higher and sort of more beefier if you uh, if you sort of know what i mean by saying that and i wanted to give them a go you know this year very much i'm in the market for a new putter i've got rid of my even roll i might regret that but i have got rid of the even roll putter i had just because it was swinging too much when i put basically my putting stroke so when i pulled the club back there was a little bit too much movement in that face before i hit the ball again Normally, it did straighten out just in time. However, it's quite off-putting looking down and then suddenly just seeing that I'm twisting it and it can really affect those putts. So I've been using a few of the Odysseys. I use the Odyssey AI-1 um, Rosie. I've used the AI-1 Milled as well. But I wanted to give this a go because that for me is my main issue. Is that twisting when I bring the putter back and then bring it back there? I just can't seem to keep it still all the time. So I picked it up. Now, and also, let's be honest, it's a great review for you guys out there because these things are not cheap. So, you know, I want to give my honest opinion about these. You know, will this be the miracle cure to fix your putting? We shall wait and see and discuss that at the end of the video. OK, so as always, what I'm going to do is we're going to have a close look at this very weird club. I have to admit, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually starting to really appreciate the looks of this. <laughs> Don't ask me why. When I first had it in the bag, like, I was just like, what is this? I was horrified by the looks. And then after literally about, I think it was literally after the first part, which was a 10-footer, and I got in and saved par, I was like, actually, I could get used to this. So there you go. Um, so I'll have a closer look at the looks. Come back here. I'm going to read all their spiel off their website about this club. Um, get down to the course, actually. Show some on-site footage of me using it, and I'll discuss the feeling of it and what I found when I do take it out on the golf course. And then, obviously, we'll come back here for the ACS Golf Scale, and I'll give you an in-depth final review of this club. It'll be an interesting one, believe me. All right, guys. Now, let's have a closer look at this sort of, let's be honest, spaceship of a club. So there you go, and it is a weird looking club, and it's massive. I mean, here's the Odyssey, if I can get that up for you right. Here's the Odyssey, one I've been using to the AI1 milled. I think it's the, what is it, the T? 11T. And just look at the size difference. Look how much bigger this one is. It's literally nearly double the size of it. I'm not a massive fan of it being in the bag. It sort of takes up half my bag. I feel like I need to get a new bag just to fit this in there. But anyway, there you go. There are the looks. However, I am warming to them. As I mentioned before, I am warming to them. And, you know, that alignment aid there, you know, the fact it's a white across the face and there. And obviously, you have the shaft center there and everything there. It's, it's, it is building on me. It really is. Now, let's get on to the spiel that is on their website. And, you know, with stuff like this, it was an innovator, completely different technology compared to all other putters, supposedly you know there's going to be some good stuff on here. So here we go. 
first things first, they mention the looks. They go, the looks, yes, it's crazy looking. And there's a legion of golfers around the world who think the direct force is the Mona Lisa of mallets. But they didn't think that until they started making putt after putt with it. <laughs> Very much like myself, you know, had it when I took it out, looked at it, went, what the hell is this? Sunk that part and I was like, oh, well, I, could, I could get used to this. I really could. So giving you some backstory. So our founder is Bill Pressey, a former mini tour player who had the idea to create a putter that would allow him to drastically simplify his stroke. He wanted to be able to count on a square putter face every time. There you go. You know, stop that swinging, which led him to invent the light angle balance lab. Bill also wanted to create a putter head that would give him as much forgiveness as possible. So he developed the radical shape of the DF 2.1 as a way to maximize consistency on off-centered hits. Yes, it looks like a branding iron, but it works. And yeah, it does look like a branding iron, to be fair. I never thought of that. So moving on, the claim. So the BF 2.1 can be can do amazing things others putters can't because of its light angle balance, or lab for short. Light angle balance gives every golfer the ability to consistently repeat the putting stroke with far less effort than any other putters. And it does this by eliminating torque. As a side note, all of our putters have light angle balance. So the Mezzanine 1, the Mezzanine 1 Max, look a lot like the most popular mallet putters out there. So they're very much like that but just a very very squat and beefy version of that um the link one looks a lot like the most popular blades i forgot about that there's actually four models i did say at the beginning there was only three there is four models um link one is like a, basically is a blade with the weights on the bottom and you still have that center shaft there as well and a df3 is a pretty darn close to being as forgiven as a df2.1 the df3 is a smaller version of this quite similar shape but just in a more compact sort of well compact putter really just a little bit more smaller if forgiveness isn't the main concern or you prefer the enhanced feedback of a smaller putter you might want to consider our other models too which are the ones we've just gone through because this is the biggest one they do thank god can you imagine anything bigger than that <laughs> You wouldn't be able to fit it in your putting bag. Well, in your bag, would you? You wouldn't be able to take it with you. God, massive. Take off half the green. And no problem to line it. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So why we hate talk. Talk is an industry problem. Golfers have been battling talk in their putters throughout the history of the game. The majority of which never realise they're doing it at all. I definitely personally realise because, like I said, it's quite off-putting to see that putter move. That's the main reason I changed my even roll, to be fair. It was actually heavier head than normal because it'd been extended to 34. And with that heavier head, I just found it moved a little bit too much. Every now and again, if I put a bad putting stroke on it, then I wanted to be fair. And I definitely missed some putts because of it. Um, so there you go. So most golfers have learned to adjust for tour by adding uneven hand pressure to the putter, introducing yet another variable into their putting stroke. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Even today, largest club manufacturers acknowledge the issue of torque marketing putters with a variety of balance types so different levels of toe hang counterbalance face balance etc yet none of these products actually solve the problem lie angle balance does it does almost anything lie balance doesn't read greens <laughs> yes it doesn't line you up at your target or out those things on your own but lie angle balance will help with distance control because your putter won't want to flop around during your stroke like a fish out of water it works with your stroke i do love reading these sort of things it works with your stroke not against it and if you do happen to contact your putter off center with a df 2.1 it won't really affect the result that's the benefit of playing a putter that looks like darth vader okay i don't see the darth vader one i saw the branding iron i don't really see the darth vader i guess it's all black i guess which I do think is a cool feature in this putter, by the way. I really do like the black shaft, the black grip, and the black putter. It says it said direct force on it. You know? I guess a Star Wars vibe there. So here we go. Now, this is one bit that you do need to consider when getting this putter. And I will discuss about my thoughts about it at the end. But here we go. Fitting is critical. So we develop what we call a remote fitting to make sure we are making the putter as perfect for you. You can do remote fitting from just about anywhere. So go ahead and start building a putter here. And when you get to the step about lie angle, just select I don't know. 
After you complete your purchase, we'll send you a video with instructions how to make a five to six second smartphone video that will allow, you, allow us to nail in your length and your lie angle. If you prefer, get your specs before purchase. You can visit our remote fitting page here and submit your remote fitting video to get fit at labgolf.com. That's quite cool, to be fair. That, I think that's a really cool feature there. I mean, just a five second video to send it to them. I mean, it's not as in depth as some putting fittings. I think putting fittings are becoming really popular at the moment because, you know, a lot of people are starting to realize that this is the club you use the most out on the golf course. You know, for me, if I'm shooting around the 80 mark or below 80, which I well, every now and again, but mostly around the 80 marks, you know, I'm hitting this 29, sort of on average 29 times, 30 times. So therefore, you know, I'm not going to be hitting my driver 50 times, am I? So this is definitely the most used club in the bag. So how we build it. So here we go. Our craftsmen use a formula we develop to anticipate the two main factors of light angle balance. The position, angle and depth of the CNC milled shaft hole in the putter head and the two precise number of grams that need to be positioned in the weight ports of our putters. So you've got weight ports here. There you go. And you've also got weight ports in the bottom. And a lot of them, to be fair, depending on your fitting, you will see a lot out here. They have a lot of weight ports there and a lot more weight on that bottom, really dialing that in, which is quite good. So there we go. We add CNC, milled weights and tungsten powder to these weight ports. A balanced process can take up to 30 minutes or more to achieve a putter that's lie angle balance at the golfer's exact requirements. You can get these in stock, just to say, which is sort of the most sort of regular ones. So the average between everyone who gets fitted for these, you can get it in stock. However, obviously they suggest you to build it. Now, here we go. If you are anti-fitting for whatever reason, we do offer a DF 2.1 stock option with our most popular build configurations. There you go. Same putter, same everything, just a lower price because they're more straightforward to build. So you do save yourself a bit of money by going down that route. But would you want to do that or would you want to spend more money to make sure you get the right putter for you? Leave that one with you. We sell more 34 inch 69 degree putters than everything else. This is what this is. This spec often works with golfers who play clubs that's fairly standard. All DF 2.1 stock putters come with a press to three degree grip, the alignment aid number one. So here you go, press to three degrees. That's that grip. And then that would be the alignment aid that, we, well, you saw when I had a closer look at the club, which I think I really like, to be fair. I wouldn't change that alignment aid. I really do like it. So press grips. So with the DF 2.1, we absolutely recommend that golfers use a press grip. Press grips work on any putter, but they're most effective with the DF 2.1 because they allow golfers to position their hands directly over the ball at address and set up most golfers prefer. So if you see, there is the head, shaft coming down, shaft coming down, and there you go. And you can see this grip there goes forward, so it's going straight down to the top of this head there. You can tell there, but the insert is actually sort of at the back of the, the grip rather than straight in the middle. It's quite a cool feature to be fair. I'd, I've tried center shafted putters before and I haven't liked them. With this, I found it really easy to use with this grip and everything like that. I wasn't freaked out at all about being above it, directly above it. I found it actually quite easy straight off the bat, which is a great thing. You know, if you picked up a putter and you're finding it easy straight off the bat, perfect you now i've got this yes one i did a review on this yes putter that's center sharpened and i just yeah just couldn't couldn't get on with it to be fair because of that center sharp it really did throw me with this though i've not had that issue at all so when choosing a press grip for the df 2.1 we generally recommend the press grip 2 with three degree this one it has a flat front section that allows golfer to feel comfortable using press grip 1.l barrel shape and the press grip og three degree all rubber also great picks and available on this part of custom. So there you go. So there's the whole spiel about this, you know, just going in a little bit more aluminium head, I believe, you know, obviously CNC milled face there, um, center sharp putter, and then you've got the special grip as well. And then you have a nice head cover that comes with it. 
So a lot of thought has gone into these putters. They really have, you know. But again, with all putters, there's a lot of thought that goes into all of them. So yes, the spiel is great. You know, I love reading that. But does that really separate it out from all the other big brands? You know, who knows? I'll let you guys judge that. Personally, for me, I think they will obviously put tons and tons of money into all the research. So there you go. All right. Now let's get down to the course. I'll talk to you about the findings I've had on it. And then we'll come back here for the ACS Golf Scale. All right, see you in a bit. So here I am down at Leatherhead with the putter. The second time I've actually ever taken it out, to be honest. Never even took it to the putting green uh, before either times of actually taking it out, which I do suggest you do do before using a putter. But anyway, now moving on, you know, on the course on the day, putted with it 27 times. Very happy with that, even though the majority of this video is me actually two putting. Um, no three putts. Again, very happy with that. You know, any time I'm putting under 30 and not three putting, I'm absolutely thrilled. So there you go now on to the performance of the putter now one thing i found that was very easy to do with this is line it up you know with the size of the putter that it is let's be honest it's massive um but also with the alignment aid you have that white line across the face of it and that little dash as well also the whole way the, you know the putter shaft goes in the center of it and the grip as well so that it leans you slightly forward so that you're really over the ball just makes it so easy to use. You know, I've used center shafted putters before and never liked them, but with this case, I really did find it really pleasant, <laughs> to be honest, and really did help line up my putts right. Um, also, because even though it is massive, because it's made of aircraft aluminium, it's really, really light. So I had no problem of putting on my normal sort of swing. I didn't feel like I sort of had to fight it coming back down, you know, obviously lift the putter up in the back swing. And then when I was bringing it forward, because it's so light, I didn't feel like I had to fight it to slow it down where some putters I've used in the past, which are really quite heavy, I feel like I really had to sort of fight it just to slow that putter head down or it would have just come out like an absolute rocket. So this meant that I could get control really, really nice with it. And I really feel at the moment, again, like I said, it's really easy to use. And my alignment might be a little bit off at the moment, which is definitely down to me just because I'm using a new putter. But I definitely feel with that and the distance control was I'm finding really easy to use and really easy to get the right distance. I think I'm going to be holding a lot more longer putts in the future. So very happy. So there you go. You know, as I mentioned, you know, really have enjoyed using this putter. I think it's really great. You know, on average... Since, well, since I've had it, taken out a few times now, I've averaged 29.2 putts. I will take that any day of the week. Anything under 30 for me is great. Normally, I average around 32. So potentially at the moment, it's saving me two putts around, which is obviously two shots. Brilliant. Um, lows of 25, actually, with it. I helped me score a 76, uh, which is a great score. It was a, a golf club called Hersham. It was only a 67. So technically, put on normal golf course, would be on 79, 80. But still. No, wasn't playing well at all, but this, you know, you only got 25 parts for this. It was saving me massively. I think it saved me five strokes, you know, because my average is normally like 30, 32. So I was really happy with that. Highest the other day was actually Silvermere, my local club actually member. Uh, only got 35 there. But again, 35, I will take anything under that 36 point. So I'm not averaging more than two parts a hole. I will take, you know, and when it came down to that day, that was all on me. There was quite a few putts. You know, personally, I actually played some really good golf, got quite a few green regulations. And unfortunately for me, I just didn't quite read the greens right. I haven't been playing Silvermere enough for my likings. I've just gone in the greens and how they sort of treat themselves and their movements. So missed quite a few putts there because of me. So that 35, not looking at that going as putter's fault, it's definitely down to me. So happy with all of that. Now, Moving on into the ACS golf scale. So we've got, remember, distance, feel, looks, price, and forgiveness. Now, I never used to do distance with putters, but I'm going to start doing it now with the idea it's distance control. So unlike irons and drivers, etc., you know, which is actually just how far it goes, I'm now looking at distance control of the putter. So for this, you know, one of the big spiel they mentioned about it was the distance control is very good. And I personally think it is. I'm giving it 4.5 out of 5. I really do think the distance control is great. It, uh, I did have a few misses where I had the distance exactly right. Just me not reading the green, unfortunately, was right. 
but still maybe you know i wouldn't say it was perfect but then it's all putters perfect so i'll give you a 4.5 it's close to perfect in my mind um probably the best sort of i've ever had to be honest but i'm still going to give it 4.5 moving on to feel feel 4.5 i think it feels lovely that face it's light as well you think this thing is massive and it's going to be really heavy and then you pick it up and do a stroke and it is light which is great you know because then you, you know you've got all this alignment aid there but it's not heavy it's really easy to basically do your putting stroke on so i was really happy with that and like i said this milled face i really love the feel of so feel 4.5 really really happy with it one of the best feeling putters i have tried looks I've given it a two for looks just because of the size of it. Personally, I'm now really starting to enjoy the looks of it. But I know if you have just picked one of that, this out of sort of a bag or a club, you'd be looking at it going, this thing's horrible. So I just want to give you a two out of five. Um, from my eyes, I might say it's higher than that. I would say it's higher than that. But I'm going to give the general consensus, which I think people will think about this. I'm giving it a two out of five. Um, some of you might complain about that because you might be like me, you've used it and you've gone, actually, no, this is the best looking thing in the world because it's helped me so much. Um, but personally, I'm giving it two out of five because I mean, look at this huge, it is absolutely huge. You know, personally, you know, I'm very much like my putters to be quite like a bit of artwork sort of thing, like Scotty Cameron's, etc. I wouldn't really say that's possibly artwork it's functional isn't it it's not artwork it's functional so two out of five sticking with it i'm not going to change my mind i'm sticking with it moving on to forgiveness five out of five i mean i wouldn't expect anything less this was something this size to be fair but it is five out of five it is very stable as well really happy with that really does help you know does keep that face in line with where you want to go with that stability so with the whole package really like that so overall, it is very good. So five out of five. And if you do miss hit it, like I said, it doesn't twist or turn. It does stay on track. So again, five out of five there. Really, really good forgiving putter there. Um, there will be putters out there that have the same forgiveness level of this. There definitely will be. But you're not going to find any more in my eyes that are more forgiving than this putter. Now the price though. And this is, this is my issue with this putter. And this is my sticking point. Brand new. Over here in the UK, you can get a £389 at the moment. US, off their actual website, you can get a $399. I believe those are just the standard models. They're not the custom fit. Um, so do be aware the custom fit will probably be a little bit more. Um, I don't understand how US is only, only uh, $11, 11, well, £11 more, $11 more than the UK. But anyway, so yeah, so £389 in the UK and $399 in the US. But like I said... That is the stock versions. Custom will cost a little bit more, which is very much a premium putter. And don't get me wrong, you know, the grip feels premium. The whole thing about it, even though it's made of, it's not sort of your normal you know, sort of steel milled, it's definitely aluminium because to make it lighter, it does feel premium as well, but it can get bashed up quite easily. So do be aware of that because obviously it's not as strong maybe as we'll sort of CNC milled steel. Um, and the head cover's very nice as well. Maybe you could do with a little bit more soft lining in it, to be honest. But yes, it is, it is a premium putter. And you, you can tell it's a premium putter when you use it. So that's fine. But it's a second-hand price I struggle with. You know, on eBay, you're ranging from about £250 all the way up to like £320. That's like $350 all the way up to like $410. That's a lot for a second-hand putter, especially something that is normally fitted for someone. And that's why I'm going to a 2 out of 5. I think it is an amazing putter. But I think it's maybe, you know, one that maybe wait for a couple of years. You know, when the prices drop, you know, there's a few more out in the market. Then I think it might be a great chance if you just want to take a punt at it. If not, if you're looking brand new and you really want to go and get it, then, you know, go and get it. Go and get fitted for it. I think you won't be disappointed. But... Price-wise, at the moment, I'm giving it two out of five just because of that second-hand market. It hasn't dropped as much as I'd want it to. You know, Scotties have been around for years. You can get really nice Scotties now for under $200, under £200, under $200 on the second-hand market. You know, you can get really nice Odysseys and get the two long versions of Odysseys out there, which are really fantastic, nice, soft-feeling, you know, great performing, forgiving, you know, putters as well. 
for under that 200 pound mark now under that 200 dollar mark as well so you're looking at sort of more of a 100 pound premium sometimes on this putter and i'm just not too sure and things like the mezzanine as well the other version was even more well it's very popular compared to this is even more so that's why i've given it a two out of five to be honest i just it is expensive but i think if you buy it and you're willing to spend that money you won't be disappointed but then I think if you spend less money, you can still get yourself a really premium putter that you're going to love. So there you go. Two out of five. And there it is. So we've done distance. We've done feel. We've done looks. We've done price. We've done forgiveness. Now, my overall thoughts of this putter. Do I think this is the best thing since sliced bread? <laughs> Close. I really enjoy it. And I'm doing really well with it. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs over the whole summer. But... Does it make me 100% a better putter? No, it offers me more forgiveness. It obviously helps that alignment aid and it does stop me sort of swinging the putter about when I sort of do my stroke. However, it doesn't stop me all the time. Sometimes that action still does happen. So do be aware of that. If you've got really bad motion, you think buying this is just going to solve it, it won't. It might help, but it's not going to solve it. I still have that issue that every now and again, I pick it up, take it back, and it does slightly move. So do be aware of that. When I'm far more controlled, obviously it doesn't, but then when I'm far more controlled with my other putters, it, that doesn't do it either. So do be aware of that. It's not going to suddenly fix your putting and make you an amazing putter. You know, those 25 putts, you know, I have, you know, I think I've done that before with the even roll at some point, you know, it, it it's very good it is very good but i don't want people to be looking at this and be going oh my god this is going to change my whole game you know i think it is a very good putter and i think it will help people out there i'm definitely going to use it over the summer and i'm really going to enjoy it however you know just it's go out and practice basically Go out and practice your putting because that's the way you're going to get really good at putting is you go out and practice it because you need to you need to learn the greens. You need to read the greens. You know, you need to be able to play on fast greens, slow greens, medium greens, etc. It doesn't matter about speed control with this if you don't know how those greens are going to react. So as much as it's a fantastic putter, I love it. It's going straight in my bag and it's staying there. You know, great performance. Really, 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 really happy with it. Um, I know that if on the day I haven't read the greens right, if I'm putting badly, this might help slightly with the forgiveness aspect of it, but it's not going to help me get in the right direction. It's not going to help me mentally get the right distance either. So potentially I could still walk off with a really high putting, well, putting amount basically. And I could be using this up to 35 plus times. So it's not the cure for everything. There we go. It is not the cure for everything. But it is a fantastic putter that if someone is looking in the market at the moment right now, you're looking to get a premium putter, you've heard of Lab, you want to give it a go, do it. Because that's proven on the second hand market, to be fair, if you buy it brand new, like £389, you know, if you go for the mezzanine, which goes for more, or the 3.0, which goes for more as well, you know, you technically probably only lose 50 quid, 60, 70 quid if you don't get on with it. I know that's still a lot of money, but it's not the end of the world. You know, it's not like buying buying some of these clubs, like I think you'll see AI milled at the moment, the one I just showed you here. You know, they're not holding their value very well on the second hand market. So if you buy that, you suddenly need to be more than 100 quid out of pocket. So at least these hold their value quite well on the second hand market. So you can potentially go out, get fit for it and give it a go. So there you go. So overall thoughts about this putter, the Lab Golf putter. Love it. Staying in my bag. I'm going to have a lot of fun with it over the summer. However, don't think this is going to be the cure to your bad putts. It's going to help, obviously, as a lot of clubs do, but it's not going to be the saviour. Going out on the green, practicing your putting, that will be your saviour. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do remember to give it a like if you did. Do comment down below as well. Have you tried Lab Putters? If you have, what model? And, you know, do you enjoy them? And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for weekly ACS golf reviews and a few extra videos in there as well. All right, then. Been a long one, but I'll catch you soon for the next ACS golf video. See you then. Bye-bye.